Hi everyone, welcome to Loving Life or VictoriaPiking.com and today I'm going uh, to share with you my weight loss journey or another Sunday weight loss or whatever you want to call me. You see how cool are those? I'm doing the video on my uh, Mac and this is a fact that I really, really, truly love. So yeah, this is the love that I'm sending to you guys. Are those cute ones? <laughs> I hope that those hearts are not too annoying, but I truly, truly love those. Uh, but regardless of the hearts, today I have quite serious topic. Now, disclaimer. Totally disclaimer. Everything that I'm talking today, it's from my experience, my knowledge, and it's not, you know, a recommendation. It's not, uh, my recommendations are not instead of uh, your doctor recommendation or a dietitian recommendation or anything like that. I'm going to address a couple of issues with diabetes and insulin resistance to as for today. And uh, this is just for your, you know, general knowledge. And uh, you have to choose which route you are taking and how it's going to be done. So, yeah, this is a small disclaimer that it's not, you know, call for action by any means. It's just my experience and I'm going to share it with you. I have to have those ones because uh, it's too noisy outside. So I'm trying to make the best quality of uh, sound as, I, as possible. So, yeah, I want to talk about diabetes. Now, I'm not sure if you all know, but my formal education is a registered nurse. So, yeah, so I have some uh, medical background to me. I haven't worked in the nursing, uh, in, in nursing for a while now, but still, I have some background. So, yeah, let's go into it. There are two, there are two types of diabetes. Actually, there are three types of diabetes, but the diabetes mellitus, it's not insulin-related sickness. So I'm not going to go to the diabetes mellitus at all. And there are two types of diabetes. There are type 1, which was in the past called juvenile diabetes or insulin dependent. When the um, autoimmune system attacks uh, the pancreas and, uh, and kills those um, cells, that uh, produce insulin. So those uh, usually happens in the um, ch children, like in children, and uh, it's uh, usually insulin dependent. You have you don't have anything around it. You need to add insulin to your blood system, and every day, multiple times a day. And this uh, type of diabetes that I'm not going to talk about because it's all new issues with, you know, children and whatnot, and adults that have for a long time this type of diabetes. <laughs> what I'm going to talk about today, it's type 2 diabetes. And this diabetes that it can happen in all age, usually it's associated with um, adults. Uh, as far as life progresses, I think around 90% of people will get it at some point of time. Uh, more and more people now getting it in younger and younger age. And unfortunately, a lot of kids started to get it as a children. Uh, the thing is with uh, this type of diabetes, it's insulin resistant type of diabetes. And this means that pancreas works perfectly, even overworks. So you have a high amount of insulin in the blood, but the cells of your body doesn't um, react to insulin so much as they used to. So, so your pancreas try to overcome this with uh, uh, producing more and more insulin, but your body is not taking, it needs more and more insulin to work uh, as it used to work before. And uh, they think that one of the things that uh, produce insulin resistance is our diet, obviously. The more we put inside sugars and um, 
processed food that uh, you know spikes our blood sugars all the time uh, the body the body cells started to be resistant and resistant and resistant uh, for large amount of insulin that the, um, our pancreas uh, produce so basically so yeah this is the basic anatomy for the uh, diabetes and especially type 2 diabetes by the way polycystic ovary syndrome like i have it's one of those types of uh, insulin resistant conditions that not all of my cells are resistant to insulin but uh, at some part of my body uh, i'm resistant to insulin especially in my ovaries and this is the definition of insulin resistance a lot of time that uh, polycystic ovary syndrome by the way it's going hand to hand with diabetes because both of those um, conditions are insulin resistant just you to know and that's why i can talk so basically my diet can be correlated to diabetes as well but first thing first i know how hard it to get the diagnosis of diabetes it feels morbid it feels uh, you know scary and it feels um, it feels, you know, that you have no choice, you have to change all of your diet, which you will, but, and it's so, so, so scary, and uh, it's scary to your lifestyle and whatnot, and people tend to go to stress, and um, it's scary condition to have, and it's scary condition to face with, but, and as usual in life, it's never as simple as it is. You can look at any situation in two ways. One way, when it's, it's scary, the life is over from now on, you can't eat your favorite foods, and in set of mind of negative set of mind, which is absolutely scary and uh, resistant and whatnot. And I, I totally get it, and I totally uh, get how it feels. But on the other hand, you can take it as a call for healthier and better life and for this there is few good very good reasons for this one first of all that recommendation for any diabetes as food wise it's the same recommendation as for everyone else to be healthy and happy and balanced life and balanced food and intake which is awesome so basically now you you have this and voluntarily uh, opportunity to go and um, to be healthier. There is no way around it. I know for sure, not once, not twice, hundreds of people, and I work with them, that they said, you know what, thank you for my diabetes diagnosis, because if not that, I probably will be dead by now with heart attack or something. And now I feel much better because I'm eating uh, balanced, good food. I started exercise because it was my wake-up call, basically. And uh, if you go with this uh, mindset of, you know, wake-up call and commitment, this commitment to get better and get healthier, especially with type 2 diabetes, it's not the end of the road. If it's not, um, you know, it's not the end of the road. It's not the, the, the last moment. It's, it can open a beautiful door to get healthier and uh, get better. I got my uh, polycystic ovary diagnosis around age of 17. I didn't have the, you know, grasp or what it is, or what is insulin-resistant condition at all. So for a, long, for a lot of years, I didn't eat the right way, or, or, or went to this in the right mindset. But then, slowly and surely, I improved my um, 
food choices and uh, I started to cook by myself and uh, I moved out of the house when I had much more control over my food intake, intake and uh, you know the kinds of food that I choose to cook and etc. But anyhow it took me for a long 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 time to get for the point that I'm in now. Um, the food recommendation, as I told, the food recommendation for diabetes, it's uh, as the same that as food recommendation for everyone else. The balance and healthy diet, funny enough. Um, but there are a couple of pointers that I would say that are a little bit different. And those pointers that you can start with, especially if you don't know where to start. So I'm going to uh, to talk a little bit about how to manage your food and and how to take it. Now, this is general recommendation. Those are not pinpoint recommendations for everyone at this point. It's um yeah, those are just how to start going to healthier lifestyle. And uh, if you have some type of condition of insulin resistance, it's really good for you. Frankly, I don't recommend to go to jump to keto right away, by the way. Especially if you just got a diagnosis, it's very hard to maintain. And it's uh, you need to be under supervision. And a lot of uh, nutritionists and a lot of doctors are not familiar with this. And they will be very much against it. So don't go with... Um, you know, with this right away. You need to be very confident in what you do before you're jumping into the keto. I know personal people that it helps them immensely to go to keto diet and they uh, got rid 100% from the um, diabetes and uh, they don't need any helper with this and uh, lower blood pressure and whatnot. But it's not the easiest um and the you know fastest way to maintain it it's pretty hard to maintain it especially if you're going um, from regular north american diet it's really hard so what the first thing that i recommend go to more to paleo side of the things uh, go with good good carbs which are mostly vegetable base like sweet potato like be careful with potatoes you remember this is not <coughs> it spikes a sugar high but on the other hand if the potato is uh, boiled okay go with a good good source of carbs uh, like uh, beets actually uh, beets are considered to be very sweet vegetable but it has a lot, a lot of uh, fibers and um, it can actually help lower the blood sugar. But again, what's the most important is the balance in between protein, fat and uh, starch and carbs. So it's very important at first, and I mean at least first you know, months or so, uh, to eat Every time you eat some carbs, you eat it with protein, and it included include uh, fruit. Fruit tend to spike the sh the blood sugar, and uh, what it does when it spikes the blood sugar spikes, amount of insulin is coming into the place, and you know the body the body is reacts. So if you can, for first week, sorry for the movement, if you can, for first week or so, go without fruits, especially bananas. I know it sounds like, uh, because bananas can spike the um, uh, sugars very much. I know there are raw vegans that swear by eating fruits helps the lower the sugar, which they write, because uh, I saw couple or triple of researchers that show that sh that uh, fruits can lower your blood sugar. But um, in order to maintain it for at least first couple of days to week, start with every meal. Do 
do about three meals and um, two snacks but snacks don't do don't do the snacks with uh, fruits or if you eat fruit always eat some protein with it like fruit in nut butter like very nice idea it's like apple dipped in um, some kind of nut butter peanuts or any other nut butters or with uh, milk or with you know where is protein and um, sugars together so yeah the meals needs to be balanced meals which in my book balanced meal is some protein and huge salad <laughs> in, into the salad though you can add uh, or like you uh, into the vegetables you can add sweet potato not huge one but a bit of sweet potato a bit of uh, carrots obviously a bit of beets if you like it um to the salad, I love to add a little bit of nuts or seeds, which add more protein and which add a little bit of healthy fats, which it will balance your blood sugar. I know that it can be a lot to take even if you are, you know, jumping uh, from regular North American diet. Another mindset that you need to change it's um, preparation, preparation, pre -pre preparation. Be prepared to anything that comes. And by the way, any dietary change that you're going to do, this is uh, going to work for you as well. You need to be prepared. You need to be stocked up in the house very well. Um, as you see, I'm not giving any radical recommendation except of per uh, to always to pair fruit with some protein and the spike of sugar won't be as big the bigger change the biggest change that it uh, change in the mind is that everything contains sugars but for years I, I was talking about it if you know about my crunchy path and like organic that they add fructose or um, sugars to all of the dressings, the breads. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm really recommend stay away from bread, even from light bread or any other bread, because I saw like light bread for diabetes or whatever. And second ingredient, it's sugar. So be very aware of those one. And eliminate any processed food. But as far as rec my recommendation, I recommend to everyone eliminate all the processed food. Uh, be very aware of artificial sweeteners. I don't like them because couple of things. One, um, they can um, damage your uh, liver, and you have already some kind of condition that strange all your of your body. So I don't like those ones. And a lot of people go, you know, especially from if you are from coming from. Uh, regular North American diet. They jump into this world of, of artificial sweeteners, which I don't recommend by any means. Uh, what I can recommend, it's stevia drops, if you like the flavor. Um, but again, and this is the, the really, really, really important. Because the change has to be absolutely must be permanent do it the way that it works for you and i mean that if you are in regular north american diet that you eat a lot of breads you're doing the, the drive through and you're making all of those um, you know all of those you know choices of food and you uh, use a lot of prepackaged food and, uh, you know, it's hard to jump from this to 100% of cooking, to 100% of, you know, balanced meal, to, to do it all day long, every day. So, what I recommend, um, two, at least two meals a day, cook for yourself and do it for yourself. Use artificial 
sweeteners because a lot of food will be at, at first very bland to you or very um, unsweetened enough. Uh, buy stevia and use a little bit of drops if you can because um, at first it will be very bland, sad and stressful if you are not going to do it the right way. Not everyone can cook and and um, to do it very well. I understand that not everyone is, uh, you know, easy. You need to eventually to learn how to cook. But one thing that you will must, must do, eliminate as much as you can process food. Because the processed food, this is what the balanced processed food is. Anything that in processed food will be very fatty, salty, and um, carby. So, so even dressings or everything. So this can throw you from the balance. Uh, so learn how to make homemade dressings. There is a lot of easy dressings to make at home with olive oil and lemon or limes and uh, or uh, yogurt. Another huge, 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 huge pointer. It's don't buy low fat things nothing because um <laughs> low fat or uh, low calories what they do in the let's say there is yogurt full fat yogurt full fat yogurt will be about uh, 4 3 point something uh, percent of fat uh, what they doing it's um, take it to take the fat out but instead of the fat they will bring carbs and sugars and because low carb and low fat what happens fat is per one gram it's nine calories and uh, sugar per one gram it's four calories so what they do they substitute all the fat to the sugars so those uh, products will spike your blood sugars for sure so be very aware not to buy anything low carb low calories or low fat and and <laughs> about low low uh, carb things which you think it's good be very aware uh, insulin has some um, thing uh, to process fat as well so when you buy low carb especially if it's processed food the chances is the chances are, sorry, that are um, you can do imbalance just by uh, eating those. So go as much as you can to to non-processed foods as well. So yeah, I hope those were helpful for now. Um, I I don't think basically it's the same recommendation to anyone else's that I will give to person with diabetes or without diabetes, or with polycystic ovary syndrome, as I am, because we all in the North American, uh, like regular, you know, Western diet, we're all in danger to go to, um, to have uh, some type of insulin resistant condition at some point of time. So yeah, I think this is what can, uh, another thing that can really, really, really improve the insulin resistance condition, especially diabetes, it's uh, sport or physical activities, which doesn't have to be really, you know, hardcore, not at all. It's 20 minutes of walking or um, even seven minutes per of, you know, power walk per day can be enough for start. So this one, again, I can recommend it to everyone, including myself. Um, that I need to walk more. Um, I hope it uh, makes sense. I hope it was somewhat helpful to you. So yeah, <laughs> by the way, if you didn't know, and probably I never told on this uh, channel, but I'm doing private menu settings uh, for st various conditions, gluten-free, whatnot. Uh, even though it's not cheap, but I'm working with you very closely uh, to make your perfect balanced uh, weekly 
menu or bi-weekly, it depends on you. But but what I'm doing, I'm going uh, like I'm going in the details with you, and I'm working with the person with all the needs, the lifestyle. I'm taking consideration the work schedule, um, what not, because a lot of times um, the problem is with uh, a lot of dietitians, as far as I know, it's that they don't take in consideration uh, your lifestyle, and I think. In order to succeed in any thing, it's the lifestyle. And I'm not, uh, by any means, I'm not uh, taking the role of dietitian. I'm taking the dietitian recommendation and making menu out of it. And uh, food that will you will you and your family will love. So, yeah, this is another thing that I'm doing. So, yeah, this is another thing that I'm doing. If you're interested in your own recipe book that caters to all your needs and all your on your flavors and taste. I'm just helping you, you know, to achieve those things. So yep, um, yeah. If you're interested, you can write me a message or uh, on Facebook write me a message, and uh, the links are in the description box below. Uh, so yeah, this is. But I think you wrote not really needs. A need professional. The problem is that a lot of people really don't know how to start this. And um, yeah, so if you got your diagnosis not long ago, I'm, you know, hugs and loves from me. I really love you. I know it can be hard and stressful, but sometimes it can be as a wake up call. And uh, just call for change and call for, uh, you know, doing new things. So, yeah, I hope it was somewhat helpful to you. Hugs, loves. Thank you for so much for being with me. Yes, and don't forget to subscribe, write me a comment, thumbs up me, and cheers. Victoria, love you all. See you next time. Bye.